Hello all, if you just watched my short video on the tip top demonstration, you've seen the amazing behavior it has that if you spin it faster than some threshold, although initially it is spinning uh, about this uh, axis here, right? The axis of symmetry, and the contact point is on the spherical surface very fast it starts to tilt until the uh, point here on the stem or on the handle touches the floor then it reverses and now it starts what spinning about the same axis but with 180 degree rotation of the direction of rotation and what uh, this uh, spin is not going to uh, tilt again so this is kind of the stable spinning while the original one that starts to tilt further and further until it reverses is the unstable spinning okay so this is a very interesting phenomenon and so many papers have been written to explain that our references here are this uh, simple explanation by F.A. Bilson and also uh, this picture here is taken from this paper called The Dynamics of a Tip Top by A.C. Orr. Now in the second paper there are lots of equations and um, I don't want to go that far, okay, because uh, it needs a ton of explanation and I try to make this video short so mostly I try to explain it based on the explanation given by F.A. and Bilson which is understandable yet avoids a lot of mathematical formulas so the first thing is it has to be uh, spun faster than a threshold okay if you do it slow it does not get the chance to reverse the second thing is this transition from unstable to stable spinning does not happen over one or two revolutions. Typically, it happens over tens or hundreds of spin periods or revolutions. And the important thing is it's independent from initial conditions. So it doesn't matter how you spin it and how you start the spinning. As long as the spin velocity is above a threshold, you'll see this reversal of rotation is going to happen regardless okay so that is really amazing now one of the important things that i mentioned is the eccentricity and the fact that if you look this point c here is the center of this sphere while the center of mass cm is a distance below that okay so this eccentricity is one of the main reasons for this reversal and the second one is this friction force here which here is out of the plane or in the plane Okay, yeah, so uh, these two uh, are the reason for such behavior as I'm going to explain for you. Uh, if you want and you're interested in 3D printing one for yourself, I recommend you download this file here on Thingiverse. That is an amazing file. The important thing is you have to print it fully solid and also you have to make sure that the surface is, the spherical surface is very smooth. So either use a very a small layer height, and if you still, with the small layer height is not that good, I recommend, regardless of how much uh, layer height you use, use some very low grit uh, sandpaper and sand it down to be extremely smooth. Otherwise, it's not going to do a beautiful uh, transition. So here, let's look at the dynamics. And again, here we try to avoid long mathematical formulas. So when you spin it in the beginning, right, you give it some angular momentum. So say, for instance, here, you spin it about that axis, you give it some omega, and about this axis, it has some i. So L is going to be i times omega, or if you call it omega naught, L naught is going to be i times omega naught. This is the initial angular momentum that you give it. But the matter of fact is you can never do this perfectly vertical. It's impossible, okay, when you spin it with your fingers to make it perfectly vertical. So while you try to do that, this axis here is not going to stay perfectly vertical. It has probably some small tilt like this. Okay, let me use a line. 
So you're going to have some small tilt like that, and you're going to spin probably about that axis instead of the perfectly vertical one. Good? And that is the start of the motion. Now, why is this tilting uh, keeps increasing until the uh, stem or the handle touches the floor? Why is that? As I said, you have the friction here at the contact point. So here, this friction is shown here with this star or asterisk. And it could be in the plane or out of the plane, depending on the direction of spin. So in this case, let's say the spin is clockwise. And if you are on this side of it, then the speed is going to be the speed of this point is going to be in the plane. So the friction is going to be out of the plane. OK, so this F is the kinetic friction. In this case, it's out of the plane. And uh, this friction about the center of mass, it has this arm from point CM to F. So it will create a torque or a moment about the centroid, which is shown by this vector M. So this M is equal to what? Equals to the vector from CM to F, this vector, cross the force F. Yeah? This is this moment that you have about the centroid. And uh, what is the effect of this moment? So this moment will have two components, M12 and M3. And what is M12 and M3? So here, the unit axis along the axis of symmetry of the tip top, we call it E3. And then, of course, it has two other unit vectors, E1 and E2, which form a plane here perpendicular to uh, the E3. And so uh, if you want, you can decompose your entire angular momentum L along E3 and on the plane E1, E2. If you call them L3 and L12, similarly, you can also decompose your moment M along those directions. So M along E3, we call it M3, and along or on the E1, E2 plane, we call it M12. Yeah? So clearly, M12 is going to be equal to time rate of change of L12, and M3 is going to be what? Equal to time rate of change of L3, right? Yeah? And the tilt angle here, we show it by this angle theta, which is the angle between the original L and your axis E3. So, what's happening here? If you look at the direction of M3, you see the direction of M3 is exactly opposite to the direction of L3. Here, M3 is negative E3, L3 is positive E3. So what's going to happen? Since M is in the opposite direction of L, this L over time is going to be reduced. On the other hand, M12 is in the same direction as L12, so over time L12 is going to go up. Yes? So the L3 component is going to be reduced. The L12 component is going to be uh, increased. And so, if you redraw this vector when L3 is a little bit smaller and L12 is a little bit bigger like this, what's going to happen? Yes, of course. The important thing is to pay attention that uh, what happens to this L itself? The only way that L about this vertical axis is changing is that you have a moment about the vertical axis. And the matter of fact is this F actually does create a moment about the L axis as well, but it's not big because this distance initially is not very large. Okay, so although friction creates a yaw moment, but it's not super large, so this L magnitude is not going to change drastically. So this L is approximately going to stay constant. Not perfectly constant. It is going to be reduced over time. You see, ultimately, it will slow down and stop. But this reduction is not big. So what happens to it is... 
the magnitude of the component of it are changing but the total magnitude is not changing the only solution for that is this angle theta to change right so it's not going to be like this because here the angle is constant and the magnitude is changing so here I try to keep the magnitude like that yes but I try to what? I try to reduce the magnitude of L3 and in, uh, increase the magnitude of L12. The only solution, as I said, is this one, this um, tip top is further tilted. So now your axis L3 is going to be like this, let's say, in this direction. And your axis L12 be like this direction. So now if you decompose your L12 is going to be bigger and your um, L3 is going to be smaller. You see that? And that means this angle here, this one, is going to be your new theta, which clearly you see that your theta is also increasing. So the only solution is further tilt, further increase in angle theta so it keeps tilting 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 until what happens a point on the stem or on the handle starts to touch the ground when this happens here on the right side we still have this friction out of the board and still this friction about the center of mass will create this moment here shown by m prime Again, this M prime has two components, M3 along the axis of symmetry and M12 along or on the plane of E1, E2. Now here, again, if we call the component of L along the axis of symmetry L3 and on E1, E2 plane L12, now we want to see what happens now that it is going to spin about a contact point on the stem. What's going to happen here? Let's look again. M3 this time, if you look at it, the direction of M3 and L3 are the same now. And if you look at M1, M2, the direction of this vector is the opposite of the direction of L1, L2. So what's going to happen over time? Yes, L3 is going to go up this time and L1, 2 is going to go down this time. And what does that mean? Again, if this magnitude of L is... Uh, getting reduced but not big time the only solution for that is this angle which we call theta and it was defined between L and L3 the only solution for that is this L3 to go down that means what that means the tilt this time to get smaller so now you're gonna get this it is gonna get off the ground this contact point is gonna get off the ground now yeah like that and you don't have any touch here and your contact point probably is going to be like that and it keeps going until theta becomes zero and now you are what you are perfectly spinning upright and at this point your uh, m prime is going to be almost entirely equal to m3 m12 is almost zero and so um, Basically, but since, as I said, this L is not perfectly constant, over time this L starts to get uh, smaller and smaller until it goes to zero and then the tip top falls. But for the moment that there is some L, it is going to be almost entirely L3 and so your spinning is going to be entirely what? About the vertical axis but with the contact on the handle. Okay, so you see this is quite a bit interesting behavior. And here I try to avoid all of the big dynamics equations and explain this amazing behavior of tip top. So hopefully the video was useful to you. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.